Hello everybody, I want to show you this video 10 first things to do for the Google Pixel 7 and Google Pixel 7 Pro. The first thing I want to show you is about the quick tap because if you double tap the back you can on some things or open some apps and so on but you have to enable this feature first so let me show you how you can do that okay for that just scroll down here scroll down the second time tap down here on the symbol for the settings then you need to scroll down to the point system tap down here on gestures so then the first point will be quick tap to start actions so then you can enable it here so just tap here and it's marked blue and then it's enabled and then you can choose an action after what you want to have. You can take a screenshot with this uh, quick tap or you can enable the Google Assistant or use the flashlight like in my case or also to open an app. Um, so pretty cool. Um, but if you want to try it here at this area, it doesn't work because if I tap now here uh, at the back, uh, no nothing happens. So you have to... Um, go out again to the basic uh, desktop and then if you double tap here you can enable the flashlight by the way if you double tap again you can also well, usually you know you can close it with that as well so it requires a training but uh, it's a pretty cool tool yeah the next feature i want to show you is the do not disturb mode i'm sure that some of you knows already about but this phone here have some advanced features for that yeah for those who doesn't know about the disturb mode it's uh, a nice feature to mute calls and notifications for a certain time and let me show you now how you can enable this feature first so for that just scroll down here scroll down again and then you have some more shortcuts here and one of it is always here then the do not disturb mode if you want to on it just tap on it and if you want to stop it just tap on it again that's easy Let's go now to the settings because you can um, chat to some stuff and give some exceptions and so on. For that, just long press now here the shortcut "Do Not Disturb," and you are in the dis you are in the settings of the "Do Not Disturb" mode. Okay, and uh, now you have the nice opportunity to chat to the uh, "Do Not Disturb" mode that you don't have to turn it on and off by your own. So that's it's automatically after. No? So just tap it here and. Uh, yeah, you can set up a sleeping time. No? They say, okay, usually you want to have a starting time of uh, yeah, at 10 p.m. and an end time at 7 a.m. and so on. Then you can tap here also if the alarm can overwrite and time. Here you can set up if uh, the alarm rings, uh, no? if you have set an alarm on the phone, that it can stop the do not disturb mode with that alarm automatically huh? so just try it out a bit huh? let me go back here so that we are back here uh was one more time so that we are back here at the do not disturb mode settings and you can give also some exceptions no? some uh, people maybe maybe like your parents no? that your parents can always reach you at any time or your children and so on no? also with some apps maybe if you need them to work or Maybe you need them at your me time and so on. And yeah, a very nice feature. Okay, now I've told you about an advanced mode and that it's pretty, pretty cool because if you put, no, let me go out here. Um, if you put your phone head over on the table, for example, the phone will automatically turn on this do not disturb mode. Of course, all the notifications and so on, they are just muted, so you still receive the messages and the calls and so on, but it's on silent mode right now. And if you lift it up and you're having some notifications, the phone will give you a little vibration that the do not disturb mode is turned off. This feature you have to enable first. Uh, let me show you how you can do that. For that, just scroll down here, scroll down a second time, just tap on the settings symbol then. Then we need to scroll down again. So to the point system here, we have it already. And then tap here on gestures. Go here to the point, flip to And like me, turn this feature on. And then you will have this nice feature if you put your phone uh, on the table with the display, then the phone is on silence. So if you say, okay, you don't want to miss calls if you exit accidentally put it uh, ahead over with the display, 
then um, you should be careful with this uh, uh, mode. But basically, it's a very nice feature and it gives you a me time a bit. No? So the smartphones could give us stress and with that you have a me time. So think about it. Okay, the next feature I want to show you is uh, also a bit for the me time. If you lay down, anyhow, if it's the sofa or the bed and so on, you can enable a nice feature for the screen rotation. So um, I think you know what I mean with the screen rotation. So just scroll on here, scroll on a second time, and then you can here uh, turn it on and off. So um, that means if you turn your screen at some apps, uh, the, you have the landscape mode and not the portrait mode and so on. Um, may uh, let's go here to the settings so just scroll down scroll down again here yeah, just tap here on the symbol for the settings and uh, if we put it now like this um, you see this is the uh, landscape mode and that will be the portrait mode so let me show you a bit more about uh, the auto rotation right now because if we go now here on the point display here it is then we have an own point for the auto rotation so Actually, it's turned on now and let's add, let us enter the option here. And we have another nice feature here, the face detection. Because sometimes, uh, this is what I meant with the me time and laying down and so on. Sometimes if you laying uh, sidewards um, like this, um, the phone will automatically rotate the, um, the content and so on, the screen. But if you have enabled the face detection, um, you will follow your face no? and that means that the phone doesn't go automatically in landscape mode so if you are still watching the same thing then your um, uh, uh, face uh, position will show the phone okay actually the portrait mode is still needed so a pretty nice feature especially for the rotation mode here so you should really enable this and try it out yeah, the next feature I want to show you is uh, if you're having a screen protection on your phone, uh, maybe a plastic film uh, or maybe a glass, another one, just to protect the screen that it uh, doesn't work so fast. You know what I mean? And uh, sometimes if you're having a screen protector on your screen, um, you, the phone cannot really recognize your touches in some cases, but you can enable a nice feature which one makes the touch screen a bit more sensible. Let me show you what I mean. So for that, just scroll on here, scroll on a second time, go to the symbol for the settings. Let's go again to the display area. And at the end of it, you will have a screen protector mode. If you enable it, um, then the screen uh, is much more sensible in case you have a screen protection here. So a pretty nice mode for that. Yeah, the next feature is about the power button because the power button is no more a real power button because if you long press it, you will have the Google Assistant. That's part of the game. Eh? And uh, if you want to power off your phone, no, just in case you don't know about the power button and the volume up button. If you press these both buttons, just for short, you're having now the power of menu. Eh? If you say you want to have the power button as a real power button, you can set it up. No, that you don't have the Google Assistant anymore with that, so that you have immediately uh, the power of menu. Let me show you what I mean. So for that, just scroll on here, scroll on the second time, tap you on the same before the settings. Then you need to scroll down to the point system again, and then on gestures. So the last point here is what should happen if you press and hold this power button. No? Actually, we hold it for the assistant. And if you turn this picture off here, you will have now, if you long press the power button, um, your power off menu. So just confirm that on power off and the phone will shut down. But if you want to use the Google Assistant, maybe in an app, no, on the starting page is no problem, but if you want to use the Google Assistant here uh, in an app, um, yeah, you have used the power button formally. Uh, for that but uh, there's a way also to use now the google assistant without um, saying hey google and so on uh, here on your phone but you have to enable it first let me show you how you can do that and use it after so just scroll down here scroll down a second time to have the settings here no? so tap on the symbol for the settings then we need the point system again and here we will need the point gestures Oh, I'm working, only working in a gesture today. Then uh, tap here on system navigation. 
And if you have the gesture navigation, tap here on the setting symbol for the gesture navigation. And now you need to enable here swipe to invoke assistant. So, and that means if you go here at the corners, you have now enabled Google Assistant. What's pretty cool because this is very useful if you are in apps, you just can have the Google Assistant by swiping in here from the corners and you have the left or the right one um, and you're having the Google Assistant. And the next feature I want to show you is uh, for our eyes uh, because uh, we are looking too often to our smartphone screen and that gives our eyes a lot of stress, especially in the evening hours, by the way. And it affects also in a negative way our sleep. No? But there's a way to protect our eyes, to reduce that eye strain. Let me show you what I mean. For that, just scroll down here, scroll down a second time. So as we have learned, we have much more icons then. And by the way, also a second page. And one new icon here of the second page is the night light. If we turn it on, we turn on a blue light filter. And as you can see, the screen becomes a bit more ambient, a bit more yellow and so on. That's a blue light filter and this protects our eyes. If you long press now you're on the symbol in the nightlife, then you have also some more options because you can change as well the intensity. As more warm this blue light filter is, um, so not the screen, so I meant the colors, um, as better it is for our eyes. Right? To be honest, it's a bit unusual at the beginning, but after two or three days, you get used to the screen colors here. If you say you don't want to have it on the day, as I've told you already, it's pretty well also for the sleep. Uh, you should enable it at latest in the evening hours and uh, that you don't have to turn it on and off always by your own. You can set it up here that's, that it uh, works automatically. Uh, so just tap here on schedule and choose the last point here. Turn on from sunset to sunrise. So that means if the sun sets, the blue light filter will turn on automatically. And if you turn it uh, and, and if the sun rises, the blue light filter will turn off automatically and it will really protect your eyes. But in general, I recommend to you to have this blue light filter here all over the day. Yeah, the next feature I want to show you is uh, supporting also our eyes. Huh? Um, Google have installed you already the uh, dark theme. Well, it's pretty awesome in the night because you don't have this uh, white screen anymore. And that um, uh, gives your eyes also more comfort if you're having a more darker theme and so on. But on the day, your eyes have sometimes some problems, especially if there's a lot of sunlight and so on. Uh, the reason why Google have uh, installed this dark theme in uh, the default settings is that saves energy because if the screen is dark and so on, um, then the Google Pixel phone will turn off some pixels at the screen and that saves energy at the end. This is also the reason, by the way, um, why we're having a dark wallpaper here no? at default settings. So, but as I have said, on the day, it's more comfortable for the eyes if you're having um, yeah, a day theme, <laughs> something like this. Huh? Let me show you how we can enable this feature and that you can schedule it that the dark theme will turn on in the evening hours because the dark theme is good in the nighttime. Okay, let me show you how you can do that. For that, just scroll down here, scroll down a second time, tap you on the symbol for the settings. Then we need now the point display. And here we have now the point dark theme. Now, as I've told you, it's already enabled, well, it's good. So let's just tap on it. But on the day, it is better you have this regular theme. Uh, let's call it day theme. Uh, and that you uh, can use, still use the dark theme and that they don't have to use it, uh, that you don't have to enable it all the time by your own. Um, let's do it automatically with the chat mode here and turn it on from sunset to sunrise. So same thing um, like the blue light filter. If the sun um, sets, the dark theme will turn on then. And if the sun rises, the dark theme will turn off and you have this basic uh, background here. What is good if you're having a lot of sunlight or general, uh, in general, if you have daylight. And the last feature I want to show you is uh, one-handed mode because the phone is pretty large and so on. So I have the uh, seven here, so uh, the screen is okay with 6.3 uh, inches. But uh, if you're having the pro version, 
ah, you cannot reach everything and so on now. It's sometimes complicated and so on. But there's a way to make the screen a bit smaller by just swiping down here the navigation bar. Huh? Um, by the way, if you're having the real navigation bar, then you just swipe down the home button. Huh? So then you have this mini screen. Here. One more time, just swipe down here uh, the navigation bar and you have that mini screen here. Now it's pretty, pretty easy to reach now everything here and so on. So a pretty nice mode. And if you finish with, just tap you on the outside on your bike in a regular mode. But don't worry, this um, if it doesn't work at you right now because you have to enable this feature first. For that, um, yeah, for that, just let go. Let's go to the settings again. So just scroll on here, scroll on a second time. Go to the symbol for the settings. Then you need to go to the point system. And you will need the gestures. I think you you know this already. And here we have the point one-handed mode. And here you need to enter it um, like this. And whenever you scroll down here, the navigation bar, uh, you will uh, have this one-handed mode. And if you tap then on the outside again, you will have this um, yeah regular screen again. If you say, okay, you don't want to scroll down all the time and so on, you, and you need this uh, one-handed mode often, you can also enable here a shortcut at the side. So then you then you have this little icon here. And um, that means whenever you tap the icon, the one-handed mode goes automatically and it's well. Um, that's a nice position here that you can then reach it e easily and so on. And you have always this one-handed mode. Yeah, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope I could uh, give you a little help here for the setup for your phone. And uh, yeah, maybe if you want, you can leave me a nice comment and uh, maybe with, with your favorite feature and so on. Or you can also leave me a thumbs up. That would be very helpful for my videos. Uh, thank you so, so much for. And I've created also some other videos with some more tips and tricks and so on if you want. Or you can also subscribe me to don't miss a new video. Uh, thank you so, so much for all your support. And uh, yeah, maybe until next time. <laughs> Ciao.